That's drunk. I've covered plenty of Super Nintendo titles that were ports of games that were originally made for the Amiga or the Atari ST, and now how about a game initially made for Macintosh? This is Spectre, made by Peninsula Gameworks in 1991 for Mac before getting ported to DOS and Windows, and eventually the Super Nintendo in 1994, with the port being handled by Synergistic Software. Yep, this is a Western-developed game, and it was a pretty big deal at the time, or at least the revamped version Spectre VR was, since it featured multiplayer over the internet, which earned the game rave reviews. As you probably know, however, most Super Nintendo ports of PC games just weren't all that good, and that spans everything from stuff like SimCity 2000, to Wolfenstein 3D, to Dungeon Master, or all those Romance of the Three Kingdoms games. You're almost always better off playing on PC. Well, Spectre is extremely simple and bare bones, so I guess you could say there's not a whole lot here to screw up when it comes to porting this game. So yeah, this one plays pretty well on the old Super Nintendo. All you're really doing in this game is driving around this tank vehicle thing, blowing up enemies and grabbing flags. Every map has 10 flags you gotta get to proceed with the game. The A button is your normal shot, which uses up one round of ammo. The B button fires a grenade, using up 10 rounds. The Y button makes your tank jump. And the X button will teleport you to a random spot on the map. The jump and teleport require a certain amount of energy, indicated up top, and you got five lives to get through as much of the game as you can. And yeah, that's really how simple this game is, but it's got a few extra things going for it. One is that you have three different tanks to choose from, speedy, strong, and balanced. This is pretty neat because it allows you to either emphasize dodging and picking up all the flags, or instead emphasizing armor and weaponry and taking the enemy head on. If you don't like those three options, you can customize your own tank stats with a set number of points. That's pretty cool. The other thing this game has going for it is how quickly it's paced. The action is very smooth, and when you die, and you will die, you start again almost instantly. No wasted time here, you gotta stay on your toes. The game strikes a nice balance between keeping one eye on the action to aim your weapon and one eye on the radar in the upper right. No, this game isn't gonna reinvent the wheel or anything, obviously, but I can dig how simple the action is here. It's extremely easy to pick up and play and get the hang of. The only thing is that the enemy tanks are freaking relentless, and your screen will start flashing as you take damage, and you'll have no idea where it's coming from. What's kind of neat is that, if worst comes to worst, you can use the jump to get on top of one of these obstacles to dodge, so that's cool. Just for the record, I know there's some folks out there that see 3D polygons in a Super Nintendo game and immediately think, oh yeah, this must be one of those Super FX chip games, you know? And no, this game did not feature the Super FX chip, just throwing that out there. But what this game does feature, surprisingly enough, is split-screen multiplayer, and it includes four different game modes. There's Flag Rally, where each flag is worth 100 points, first to 1,000 points wins. There's Base Raid, which is Capture the Flag. There's two-player co-op versus the computer, and there's the basic arena where you just go around shooting everything that moves, including each other. The game performance here is solid. There's hardly any slowdown, which is pretty impressive. But the thing is, every map and every game mode looks exactly like this. Either you dig the visuals here or you don't. I kind of like them. They match the simple gameplay while still having a certain style. Sure, that style is extremely early 90s, but it still works for me. So yeah, just a quick video on one of those games you almost always see at a used game store for like $6 that you haven't heard of and can't really discern any information from based on the title and the cartridge label. It turns out Spectre is pretty good. It's really a basic no-frills shooting game that has a bit of an addictive quality to it, and it's a good time playing with a second player. Alright, I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day! destroyed.